Welcome back to our weekly environmental news report. First news. A recent aerial survey taken by the ARC Center of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies found 900 miles of coral ecosystems dead due to coral bleaching. The study surveyed what seems to be the terminal decline of the Great Barrier Reef. The latest damage is concentrated in the middle section, whereas last year's bleaching hit mainly the north, and experts fear that the proximity of the two events will give damaged coral little chance to recover. In addition, a report from Australia's Climate Council estimates that this loss of coral reefs could cost $1 trillion globally, with the loss of Queensland's Great Barrier Reef alone costing that region 1 million visitors a year and draining $1 billion from the economy. The decline of the Great Barrier Reef is a direct result of a warming climate, and the only way to protect coral reefs is to stop greenhouse gas emissions. An edible water bubble developed by startup Skipping Rocks Lab hopes to replace the millions of plastic water bottles thrown away each year. The water ball, named Uho, encircles drinking water within an edible membrane made from a natural seaweed extract. After Skipping Rocks Lab spent the past couple years developing an innovative manufacturing process at the Imperial College London, the bubbles can now be produced at a lower cost than plastic bottles. The team plans to implement the water bubble at public events such as the London Marathon. Researchers from MIT and UC Berkeley have come up with a technology that can turn water vapor in the atmosphere into liquid water. Their approach uses less power and works in drier environments. Professor Evelyn Wong and Professor Omar Yagi built a small prototype water collector that contains a thin layer of metal organic framework powder, which absorbs water vapor until it is saturated. After applying heat to the system, the water is released. The device is capable of producing 2.8 liters of water in 12 hours and can work in conditions where humidity is as low as 20%. The researchers hope to scale up the prototype and have water off-grid in the future. A U.S. steel chemical spill in Portage, Indiana this week leaked a toxic chemical into a Lake Michigan tributary, forcing the closure of beaches in and around the Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore. The chemical was hexavalent chromium, a carcinogen, and was present in processed wastewater. A pipe failure at the steel plant led to the contaminated water being released to the wrong wastewater treatment plant and discharged into Burns Waterway. Mitigation efforts include the isolation and repair of the damaged pipe, recovery of material, and the addition of a water treatment compound to the wastewater treatment plant to help remove the chemical. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel announced this week that the city plans to power all of its public buildings with clean energy by 2025. In 2016, Chicago's municipal buildings and equipment accounted for about 8% of the city's electricity consumption. Once this transition is completed, Chicago will be the largest city in the nation to supply its public buildings with 100% renewable energy, beating out Las Vegas. Chicago plans to meet its goal through a combination of solar and wind projects in the city, clean energy supplied by utilities, and renewable energy credits. That's all for this week's environmental news report. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and help promote environmental awareness. Thank you.